It's time for Around the Ozarks in 5. Here are your hosts, Ethan and Sarah Foreheads. Hey, good morning, everybody. Hope you had a great weekend. Uh, We had a pretty good weekend, busy weekend, but a good weekend. And uh, now we're going to start with some news. Yeah, another cold night out there. Uh, We're supposed to drop back down well below freezing tonight as temperatures drop back into the mid-20s. Sounds pretty terrible, huh? Uh, The wind chill will make it feel considerably colder than that. That means crisis cold weather shelters are open last night um, and will be when the temperatures are bitterly cold. Yeah, again tonight, they'll be open uh, for a couple of nights in a row, which uh, hasn't been the case for for quite a while, actually. We've we've been through a pretty long stretch without any really cold weather, but we're back in it now, and the wind chill doesn't help anything. So I, we were out last night, and uh, a little brisk, wasn't it? Yeah, and it doesn't take brisk. much for me to feel cold, but... Um... It was the wind. The yeah, wind will, wind get, will you. get you. The wind will get you. Uh, here's the good news. It's kind of a roller coaster this week, but we're going to head up. Uh, so today we'll get up to uh, only 42 with some sunshine. Uh, tomorrow, 50. Wednesday and Thursday, 60, 61 or 2. Okay. Uh, maybe some storms on Thursday as another cold front moves through. And then we're going to be uh, stuck in the 40s and 30s. Uh, basically Friday through at least next Tuesday. So mm. not the best forecast in the world, but, you know, we're headed on a, a short upswing over the next couple of days. Okay. Uh, now to this well-known Springfield cardiologist and humanitarian Dr. John Bentley has passed away. He was 88 years old. Uh, Dr. Bentley worked in private practice for 35 years, and he also helped our community a lot. You may know him. He helped create the Jordan Valley Community Health Center and was the medical director there for 20 years. He was also honored as Springfielding of the Year in 2015. Yeah, he leaves quite a legacy, quite a legacy. Uh, This is happening. Attorneys for the development proposed for Sunshine and National. You haven't heard anything about that in a little while. Well, now there's something. They're asking a judge to dismiss a lawsuit filed by residents who oppose the development. Uh, The judge heard matters, uh, arguments, and will decide the matter here soon, at least that part of it. The proposed development would be on the northwest corner of the National and Sunshine intersection and would include uh, a six-story apartment building with shops and restaurants on the bottom floor. Some residents of the University Heights neighborhood just behind that are trying to block rezoning to allow it. So that's the fight. A bill in the Missouri legislature would allow a casino to operate on the Osage River at Lake of the Ozarks, Uh, seeks to grant a new casino license at that location. Currently, the state allows 13 casinos located on the Mississippi and Missouri rivers. And as you know, casinos in Missouri must be on or near a body of water. Yeah, that law is so (laughs) just dumb, for lack of a better word, because... They originally said, okay, we'll allow riverboats. You have to be on the water. And then they then they said, well, okay, but if you're not on the water, we'll allow you to be on a moat. If you create a mo- moat, as if water is some magical thing that yeah. makes gambling okay. Uh, you know what I mean? So now, okay, now you can have a, if you put water around your building, somehow that will make casinos okay. And then it went from that to, okay, you have to just be near. We're going to get away with that, with that dumb moat idea. <laughs> and you're just going to have to be near water for some reason. I don't, I don't know what magical powers water has over casinos, but maybe yeah. something. It's a weird rule. I mean, yes, my worldview is that of a conservative probably, but I come from Oklahoma and there are casinos everywhere, everywhere. Like, you guys, watch out. I'm just telling you, Oklahoma is like a mini Las Vegas, and Missouri could be on the way. So that's all. Well, you've seen that in your small town, uh, and it's not. And I've seen the devastation of it, honestly. Of the people, because they're there at all hours of the night. They're addicted to gambling, losing their money. And it's a, I mean, I went in there just because I was in your town one time. Yeah. I was just curious. 
and it was depressing. It was it was sad. I know. And, uh, I have literal like classmates who work there. Um, and by the way, I worked for Senator Tom, Dr. Tom Coburn, who has now passed away when Oklahoma was first starting to explode with casinos. And I was a constituent liaison. That's a fancy title for the girl who answers the phone and talks to people about issues of concern, you know, like where they're like, call your Senator and let them know how you feel about this. Um, and I have listened to a sob story or two. Um, and I don't say that flippantly the sob story part. I'm just telling you, I don't know where this is headed, but, um, the bill is working its way through right now. So we'll see what happens with that. We'll keep you posted. Yeah. I, I, you know, I lived five years in Las Vegas and I, and I love Las Vegas. I love my time there. I like a lot of, a lot of things about Las Vegas. Uh, I have fond memories of there, but I, th I'm not a fan of, uh, gambling outside of like Atlantic city and Las Vegas. I think if you go there, it's a destination and yeah, you take money that you're going to lose. But when it's, when it's, you know, down the street, a block or two, yeah, I think it just makes it harder on people. And yes, everybody's responsible for their own actions. I get it. I'm for that. But, uh, it's a problem. Less, less somebody else stumble. I don't, I don't want to help cause that. So, uh, and it, it, it's something, it creates a problem that wouldn't have been a problem if they didn't have access to it. Right. right. But, uh, and again, personal responsibility, but some people just have a weakness for it. So I don't know all in all, I don't think they're helpful for society as, uh, as an everyday thing to do. Okay. Moving on, uh, victory for the St. Louis battle Hawks in their first ever home game. How about this? And it set a record for attendance in the XFL with more than 38,000 football fans in attendance. Wow. The Hawks play. Yeah. That's a, it's a big crowd. Uh, they play in the dome, so it looked more than half empty, <laughs> but <laughs> where the Rams used to play. But still, it was a big crowd uh, if they were in a smaller stadium. They beat the Arlington Renegades, Arlington Renegades yesterday by a score of 24 to 11. Uh, they are now three and one, the Battle Hawks on the season. So doing pretty well in the XFL. That's awesome. Uh, and then. Yeah, it is. It's cool. It, it gives the fans something because there's a lot of football fans that miss the Rams in St. Louis, understandably so. Uh, and then there's this for soccer fans in the area. Another win for the St. Louis City soccer team. Uh, they are now the only undefeated team in all of Major League Soccer, and they're doing it in their very first year in the league, which is super cool. Over the weekend, St. Louis City beat Portland by a score of 2-1. to one. They can now make history as the first expansion team to ever win its first home game, four, first four games home or away, if it wins it next week at home in St. Louis. So we're rooting for St. Louis City. Um, you like messed that story up so bad that I feel like I should read the last sentence again. <laughs> okay, go ahead. So you said that they can make history as the first expansion team to win its first four games if they win next week at home in St. Louis. Yeah, I don't the, think you I, said it right. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Well, I messed up halfway through, but I think I may have fixed it, but, but perhaps okay. not. We don't need, I don't need to go through the replay. <laughs> Either way, we got you covered now. Um, okay. okay. Now this downtown Springfield is getting a new Mexican food restaurant. Yeah. To replace Maria's, which was closed down. Um, Good. I'm very excited about this because Ethan can tell you, I am a sucker for Mexican food. I love Mexican food. My best friend growing up is Mexican. Her mom can cook real Mexican food. And I have not found a Mexican food restaurant in Springfield that I absolutely love and adore. Now, don't worry. I frequent a lot of them. I will give them my money, but I'm just saying, um, I like a, a good Mexican restaurant. So in the same spot as Maria's is going Cabos Bonitos Grill and Cantina preparing to open. Uh, workers actually from the former Los Cabos, which as you remember, shut down on national, on South National, it closed down. And so this new restaurant is going to open in the coming weeks using some workers from that place. Yeah, but uh, you and I were, were big fans of, of Los Cabos. We were I know, that one was good and it yeah. went away. Well, maybe this uh, maybe this will be similar. It's got Cabos in the name, and so a lot of the, like I think the assistant general manager is, is this is this is his new gig. So 
uh, hopefully they've brought over some of the recipes. I was really hoping Los Cabos would open up somewhere else. What's that? Have we already been over this? I think we've already talked about this. But that that big empty restaurant that's just sitting there on National, kind of across the street from Los Cabos. It's the Mexican place your, or the Italian place your mom used to like. Oh, Zio's? Yeah, Zio's. It's just a big building. It's defunct now and looks terrible. Yeah, I, I mean, it's funny. Zio's is a chain that is super successful elsewhere. I'm not sure why it didn't work here. Well, there's a story behind it that, that I kind of recall, not enough to go into into detail here. But the building is just sitting there, and it looks terrible. And I was hoping that Los Cabos would maybe move over there, but yeah, not happening. Well, we'll see if this is some good spicy Mexican food. And I know that the people who grew up in Springfield love Mexican Villa. My sister Kim is one of them. But I'm a chips and salsa girl. We've gone over this. And theirs tastes like it has a ton of sugar in it. Now, don't get me wrong. I like sugar in a chocolate brownie, but not in salsa. Well, there's sugar's in all place. salsa. Just there's a time and a place. There is, there is sugar in all salsa. They just have a little more sugar. Okay. All right. Now to the Branson Landing. Also getting a new restaurant. Different one. Um, Ozark's Brasserie Restaurant and Bar will be a French-Italian eatery featuring seafood and European fare. Ooh chef la Colin la. Thornton. Yeah. Ooh la la. Uh, the chef, Colin Thornton, will run that kitchen and has experience from Big Cedar Lodge and some other hotels. Well, you know, that'll... that. The landing is an interesting place for that restaurant. I mean, Ozark's uh, Brasserie. What, what is it? Ozark's French Italian. That's an interesting combo. Everybody stay tuned. I'm going to click over here. Everyone, can you hear this? Listen. Brasserie. Brasserie. I had to look up that word. I was unfamiliar. I told Ethan that I'm not smarter than a fifth grader and I'm not familiar with the word brasserie. But um, it has a definition that is included in restaurants. Um, so it means an informal, usually French restaurant serving simple, hearty food. <laughs> okay. Part of that sounds Ozarky. See? Hearty. Yeah. Um, okay. We'll and then, sorry, one more, one more. We're on a restaurant kick right now. So we're just yeah, going to go for it. Bring them on. Uh, Springfield is getting a new pizza chain. Mr. Gotti's Pizza, G-A-T-T-I. Uh, is planning to open up in Springfield as one of its 17 new franchise locations, but we don't yet know the specific location. So stay tuned for that. Uh, we also don't know how many they're going to put here. At least one. Mr. Gotti's currently has restaurants in 12 states. Yeah. Or when. We don't know when they're planning to open, but we just know that they're planning to come to town. So I've never had Mr. Gotti's. I don't. I haven't been to, well, I've been to those states, but I've never been to a Gotti's location. So, hey, more pizza, the merrier, I say. I love pizza. I do. I love um, our restaurant updates. I always I in, always like getting the scoop, and I hope you do too. That's why we share it. This Getting the scoop on a, when and where a new restaurant is coming to town. Yeah. I like that. I do enjoy driving by new buildings and construction, like commercial construction, and saying, yeah. like, figuring out what's going there. Right. And then you find out it's a bank and you're like, oh, another bank. There's so many banks. <laughs> I feel like I asked about that story one time. Like, why? what's up with the number of banks? A lot of banks. A lot of banks. Um, in fact, I did the story. I just can't remember the answer. So there you go. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, that's it for, uh, for Monday. Thank you for watching. Hope you have a fantastic week. It's going to be up and down weather. So keep your coat handy. Bye. See ya.